Hi, this is Nawfil from Note Solution. We're going to be talking about long-run competitive equilibrium today. And we're going to be looking at a question of medium difficulty, just to clarify our concepts. So the question says, in the long run, or in a long-run equilibrium, the marginal firm has. And then we have some options. So the first option is price equals average cost, or price equals average total cost. Now, in the long run, we know that the price would be since this is our equilibrium point right over here, so we know that the price is going to be equal to the long run average cost, which is equal to, which is also equal to the short run marginal cost. Now what that is saying is basically, the price that you're getting in the long run should cover your costs on average in the long run, so that um, you're, not, you're not experiencing any losses or profits, but you are in the equilibrium condition where price equals average cost. So, um, for example, let's just take another um, another point over here. For so, if you were to increase production and you were to go somewhere over here, let's say. So this would basically mean that now your longer average cost has started to increase, and the marginal cost right over here is higher than your longer average cost, and also the price. Because remember, the price is given for a particular firm, and so the price remains the same. It's just the cost that can vary. So this is saying that you're actually um, your price is not only less than your longer average cost, but also less than the marginal cost, and you're definitely not producing at the minimum efficient scale or the <clears throat> or the scale where you can maximize your profit. You're in fact going into losses, and so it would it would um, pay you, or it would in fact benefit you if you decreased production and went back to the equilibrium point, just because producing these extra units is not worthwhile since the cost of producing these extra units is greater than the price that you're receiving in the market. So now let's take another point, for example, over here. Now this says that your longer average cost is greater than your price, so that's okay, but your marginal cost is down over here. So the cost of producing the extra unit is less than the price that you're getting in the market. So it would pay you to in fact increase production and go back to our equilibrium point right over there so that you can have a point where your price equals the, the, the cost of producing the last unit as well as the cost on average in the long run. So that's basically why price equals to average cost in the long run. So that seems to be right, but let's just move on. The next one says total revenue equals to total cost. Now, when total revenue equals to total cost, that means that we have no economic profits or losses. So the revenue is equal to the cost. So what you're making is being um, is what is what the production is costing. And so you're not making any profits or losses. So if you remember, this diagram is sort of primitive and old, but it does play a good part over here. So your total cost curve is of this shape, and then your total revenue curve is just straight. And so because remember, it's just a, it, it's just priced into quantity, so it'll be straight since quantity is increasing. Um, so, in this particular area, we see that the total the total cost is greater than the total revenue. So firms are making losses, and so firms will exit, which would mean that you would in fact be reducing supply. And if we look at this point right over here, we see that the firms are making profits, and so more firms will be entering. And it's only at this point that the long run can survive or exist just where there's no profits or losses, so there's no incentive for firms to change the position that they're actually in. So if there was an incentive, if they were either here or there, then you'd be you'd either go to this point or you'd vary away from this point just because you're not in equilibrium. So in equilibrium position, you would have no incentive to change just because your total revenue is equal to your total cost, or in other words, you're not making any economic profits or losses. Uh, so that also seems to be right. Part C says economic profits equal to zero. So that's just reinforcing what I just said before. And the last part says all of the above are correct. And so this is our answer. I'm just saying that price needs to be equal to average cost in the long run, as I've shown before, as well as total revenue equals to total cost, because these are equilibrium in our long run situation. So the answer would be D.